Hey, welcome to TechnoSavior. In this video, I will discuss about how authentication and authorization is implemented using OAuth 2.0 and will show you how to use the Google Playground. OAuth 2.0, also known as Open Authorization, is the industry standard protocol for authorization. So, OAuth is mainly used for authorization, but authentication can be implemented over authorization. For example, you want to build a Outlook-like app which can read mails from Gmail. In this case, you want an user to authorize your application via OAuth to read his mails on your behalf. Now, if you want to maintain a sign-in process for your application just via Google or Facebook, in this case, you need access from the user to read or verify his email address via OAuth API. Once the user authorizes the application to read his basic profile information, using this the application can verify the authenticity of the user by reading his email address from the API call and then authenticate the user. Let's understand OAuth authentication process in details. So here there is an application which wants to create a sign-in process only via Google or Facebook. Let's take Google as the OAuth provider. So first the application sends the authorization request along with the scope. The scope tells Google what all features it needs to use via its token. In our example, since we just need the user email ID to authenticate the user, so we have sent the scope as userinfo.email. At this point, a pop-up opens up where the user is asked to log in using his email ID and password if he is not already logged in. The pop-up displays the permission that is requested by the app. On successful login, the Google's OAuth server returns a grant token. The application but needs the authentication token to access the user information from Google Plus server. So the application sends the grant token to the server in exchange for an authentication token. On receiving the grant token, the authentication token gets generated. Now this authentication token is sent back to the client. The client only stores the authentication token, not the request token. As once the request token is used, it cannot be used again. But the authentication token can be used multiple times. Now the client sends the authentication token to the Google Plus server to get the user email ID. Google Plus server on receiving the token verifies if the token is valid or expired. If the token is valid, the server fetches the user identity and sends it back to the user. Now the application can use the email ID and redirect the client to the user homepage based on this email ID. This is how very easily without maintaining any database for user authentication, the application can do a third party authentication via OAuth. Here authentication was used on top of authorization as the user authorized the application to access its public info, but the application used this information to authenticate the user in its website. Let's understand via this new example how OAuth can be a very powerful process for authorization and the scope is not just limited to getting the user information. Here the application sends the authorization request but this time the scope is changed to gmail.read only. The token gets generated with the privilege to access the user emails. Now this token is sent to the gmail server to fetch all the user emails. The gmail server on verifying the authenticity of the token sends back the required emails as its response. This helps the third party application to get access to your mails on your behalf via OAuth authentication process. The scope is limitless. OAuth can be used to tweet on your behalf, post Facebook posts on your behalf and do many other things. Now let's look at the OAuth implementation live. Okay, so this is the Google developers playground. In order to access this website, you can see the link in the description box below or you can just search in Google. So here you can see what all APIs are allowed. So there are a lot of APIs which can be accessed via OAuth. So you can find here there is a Gmail API. Here read only will let you view the email messages and uh, gmail.send will allow the application to send mail on your behalf. So but anyways we are not interested in this. Uh, we will be looking at a basic example. Okay, We can use this Google Plus API. So here we want to access the user email and some basic information about the user. So I'll select these two things. Then I'll click on authorize APIs. At this point, if you are already logged into Google, it will show you the list of accounts that are already logged in and you can choose any one of these accounts. 
If you are not already logged in, then Google will ask you to enter your username and password. So here I will select Techno Savior Crypto. So on successful authorization, Google will send back the authorization code or the grant token. So here you can see we have got the authorization code. If I search it, you can find it over here. So you have received the authorization code here and the scope is email plus profile information. So now we need to exchange this authorization code to get the access token. So if we click on the exchange authorization code, it will make a new request and it will send a response. So as you can see, the request was made to OAuth version 4 token using the authorization code and it sent us an access token. So this is our new access token. If you click on this, you will be able to find this is our access token. Now we can use this access token to get the user information. Now since we have the access token, we can click on list possible operations. So it will list us all the possible operations that can be done via this token. So we can click on get user info and we will send the request. So as you can see, we received a proper response. So let's recheck the access token. So if you copy this, so you can find when we are trying to get the user info, we are sending the entire access token due to which on successful verification of the token, the Google server has returned as the detailed information. So you can use this email for successful login to your application because the user has proved its identity. There are some other information that also can be used like in order to show the profile image of the user you can use this link and you can use the name property to show the user name and details. So this is how you can achieve authorization and authentication via OAuth 2.0. If you like this video please hit the like button and if you are new to our channel please subscribe our channels for upcoming new videos.